Uh, I spoke to a couple of analysts today. Some are impressed with uh, ShopRite's turnover numbers. Others say relatively disappointing. What is your view? It depends, it depends what you compare it against. Mm. Um, if you compare it against what we think happened in the food sector, the numbers are okay. I think that um, they probably maintained or very, very marginally grew market share, which is a good sign. But like the entire sector, their numbers have been affected by the lack of inflation. In fact, 1.2% deflation. So um, at the end of the day, what differentiates and what will differenti differentiate ShopRite from its competitors at probably is space growth. Now, ShopRite's space growth, the implied space growth in these numbers is 5%. I don't believe their competitors grew space to that extent, yeah. so that means that you know, they, they would have done better than competitors. However, if we compare ShopRite's numbers against our expectations for the rest of the retail sector, the numbers are obviously poor. But that's, you know, the, the question, I guess the question is, how does that compare against the expectation? The numbers relative to my expectation are, the, the, there's nothing really to, um, there's, nothing, there's nothing really different. Quarter two was pretty much in line, marginally slower than quarter one, but relative to the rest of the um, the rest of the retail sector, I think you're going to see much, much, much better numbers. You're going to see apparel retailers credit probably 15% plus, cash retailers in apparel, certainly in in early double-digit numbers, furniture retailers, and you know, um, MassMart gave a trading update to the AGM, but just have a look at these stats SA numbers for furniture. And that's where shop run unfortunately comes out very poorly. The numbers um, on, in an, on, on, on nominal terms, stripping out the uh, inflation, is still 10%. Shop right only came in at 4 but 4.2% to yeah, be precise, but, yeah. But, but, but um, ten percent from the stats SA numbers, and that's consistent through the last um, six months. So why do you think Shoprite underperformed in that particular sector? I think there's been very, very aggressive competition, particularly from MassMart, and I would suspect from the JD Group, which of course is coming off a low base. But I think that with HiFi having been repositioned and called it fixed up, so to speak, I think the competition out there has really been very aggressive, and with uh, Walmart probably about to take control. I think you're going to see even more aggression in in the um, certainly in the plug goods categories and that's of course where ShopRite's furniture interests compete very aggressively. One of the things that is very positive when it comes to ShopRite that they have a very firm footing in Africa and you were alluding to food inflation in South Africa not being well, re relatively uh, being benign. Some areas of Africa are starting to experiencing, experience uh, food inflation, others not so much but surely that will start feeding through eventually. It does feed through but the problem is, the moment you have high food inflation, what we've seen in Africa, you have high food inflation, unfortunately it gets, um, it gets negated by volumes. Mm -hmm. Volumes go down. So um, we, we st y the major issue facing ShopRite is the strong rand and the currency translation. I mean, you saw 13 and a half translates back into three because you've had a currency differential of 3 percent, uh, of 10 percent. Mm -hmm. So that um, will obviously be a hindrance going yes. forward as well and if you don't see rand <coughs> Another thing you must bear in mind in ShopRite is the total sales growth, I think it was 9.5%. Unfortunately, they don't tell you in the announcement, it's distorted. Because last year, the Transfarm um, farm, Pharmacy Wholesaler wasn't in there, it's in there this time round. And I guess you can take off a good 2%. So when you strip that out, the um, like for like group growth was probably only 7.5%. And that of course is you know relative to what you're going to see coming out of apparel and furniture retailers, the other furniture retailers and apparel retailers um, is not going to be a good number. But relative to other food retailers is probably going to be okay. Okay, so what would you be doing with uh, your ShopRite stocks at this point in time? Would you be putting a sell on them? Well, I mean, we, we, um, we in our last report, we called it a sell out. One year target price is 101 rands. At that point in time, the share was trading pretty much at 101 rands, so there was nothing in it. It's now, of course, 95 something. So, um, together with the dividend, it kind of just fits into the sell territory, depending on where the share price goes and, de and depending, of course, on how we adjust our earnings forecasts. Um, it, may, it may move into a whole territory. It, I can't say at this stage, it all depends on the numbers. Remember, this is just a sales update, not a profit update. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I if we have to stick to, the, um, to our existing recommendation, the recommendation officially is a sell. And it's really premised, and not on the fact that ShopRite's a bad business, but relative to other retailers, the return based on our triggers, the, um, the return is insufficient 
to, to change the recommendation. So sell shop rights by <coughs> perhaps the likes of pick and pay, central distribution system looking relatively good. Well, yes, of course, aggressive spending going forward as I well. I hope that's your view. It's certainly not my view at this stage. I'd like to see pick and pay sales numbers. Remember, this is the very first of the big retailers to report. Um, when we've had another three or four numbers out, I guess we'll, one will be in a better position to, to, uh, to take a, a more definitive view on the way things have traded. I think generally Christmas was good. And I spoke to one, one or two of the big privately owned wholes, um, retail groups today, and certainly nobody's complaining. I think trading was good, but you know, once again, I think we're going to see this wide discrepancy between food at the low end of sales growth versus apparel with a, with a, with a variation between cash and credit and furniture. We're going to see a big gap um, between the four of them. Well, that's it, Sid. Which of the retailers would you be buying right now? I only got back to work yesterday, so <laughs> really, we bombard you no, with no, that don't question. bombard me with something like that yet. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Uh, Sid, also just uh, very quickly, uh, looking at the overall retail space, are you relatively bullish uh, for the likes of 2011? I think 2011 is going to be okay, but probably the big theme this year, the big unknown, and Davi Ruotu is on just before me, spoke about it. It's food inflation. If, you know, we know food inflation is going up. It's a question of whether it goes from 2 to 6 or 2 to 10. Mm. And we may see a reversal of the shift that we have seen where food money has, been, has shifted to apparel and furniture and general merchandise. Um, if food inflation rears its head badly, of course, the shift is going to reverse. And it's difficult to predict where that one's going to go at this point in time. I'm a little bit concerned that that the um, that economists' predictions for food inflation may be a little bit short, and that the number actually goes higher than you know overshoots. That's that's if I have to say that that would be my my personal my biggest my biggest fear, and that would be my theme, for which I can't give you an answer at this stage.